So now we're going to have a look at labour. Your body's changed a lot during pregnancy, but it's now going to change more during labour itself. Let's have a look at a diagram of a very pregnant woman and just see some of those changes that may occur. So here we've got a very pregnant woman. This is the uterus, which is a muscle um, that's doing most of the work during labour. The top of that uterus is called a fundus, and that's what they've been measuring throughout your antenatal visits. Down the back here is your lower back, and as, pregnant, as your pregnancy develops, and also during labour and there's more pressure as the baby drops further down, you might find that you're experiencing a lot more backache. The bladder is sitting under here, and as many of you know, you're going to the toilet a lot more frequently because there's added pressure with the baby sitting on that as well. In the uterus itself, you've got your baby. The placenta often sits on the top on one side or the other. The cord um, attaches to bub. And then down here, we've got the cervix. The cervix is the gateway between the vagina and the uterus. And as the labor progresses, it's the cervix that's actually going to get shorter, softer, and start to open. And that's actually what your contractions are doing. So let's have a look at the different stages of labor. Prior to labour beginning, you might actually have some backache, you might have some tightenings, and you might have what we call Braxton Hicks. That's when your tummy gets really tight, you might get a pulling on one side or the other, but it's not actually a contraction. It's a way your body's getting ready. The closer you get to labour, you might have some contractions, which means that most of the pain you experience is quite low or very low down in your back. Other things that might occur is you might get really tired, you might have some loose bowel actions, and sometimes the waters can break before you actually start labour. But we'll talk more about that as we go along. Sometimes it can be difficult to know when is the right time to come into hospital. Labour can be difficult to describe because it's different for all women. Generally, we advise you to come to the women's once you're having regular contractions that are about three to four minutes apart, lasting 45 to 60 seconds, and becoming more painful and intense. If your waters have broken, but you're not having contractions, please come in so that we can check to see how you and your baby are progressing. In some cases, you may need to stay at the hospital. Otherwise, we may advise you to go home for 12 to 24 hours to see if your labor progresses naturally. It's normal for you to experience a thick or a bloody discharge from the vagina, often called the mucus show. But if you have any other bleeding, please come in to be checked out. You should continue to experience your baby moving right up until the birth. If you feel your baby's moving less than normal, we want to know about it. For second time mums, your labour is likely to be much quicker. So it's recommended that you come to the hospital sooner than you did for your first birth. If you recognise any signs of labour before 37 weeks, you need to come into the hospital for an assessment. For what to bring when you come to the hospital, please refer to Having a Baby at the Women's Handbook. You would have received this at your booking appointment. Otherwise, check our website for a handy fact sheet about helping you plan your stay. If you're unsure if you're in labour or not, or if you have any concerns, please come into the hospital. If you are not in labour, or if your labour is not established, you may be advised to go home. Research tells us that women labour better in the early stages in the comforts of their own home. If you have any questions, ask our staff at your next pregnancy clinic appointment. All through labour, we're actually going to be assessing your baby's health and wellbeing. And we can do that by listening to their heartbeat, we can do that by feeling the position they're in, and we can also tell that by the colour of the amniotic fluid or baby waters once the ba bag has broken. The fluid is normally clear or sometimes pink. Very occasionally it might be a brown or grey colour, and that means that your baby's already had a poo. Now they only tend to do that if they're a bit distressed during labour. We'll talk about distress and ways of dealing with that a bit later on. As the labour progresses and the baby's head gets further and further down, mum will start to feel a lot more pressure deep in the cervix. Being at home for most of the labour is a really important thing. It allows mum to be in an environment where she feels comfortable, where she's with people who can support her, and she's got things around her that can make her um, feel less aware of the contractions that she's experiencing. By the time most women come into hospital, their labour is usually fairly well advanced. Now some women might come in one, two or three times during their labour before they're actually admitted. When you come in, your contractions are possibly three to five minutes apart, 
lasting 40 to 60 seconds, and the contractions are quite strong. They've been developing over a time and the labour is progressing. Time spent in labour, we'll talk about more about what we can do to help mum. The cervix will now be fully dilated, about 10 centimetres apart. The baby's head will be sitting well down in the pelvis and having a lot of pressure on the lower bowel. So it's very common for women to feel like they'd like to have a bowel action. The pain that women are experiencing with their contractions is very much front and centre and quite low down. During the second stage of labour is when the baby's actually going to be born. The second stage can take somewhere between one to two hours for most first time mums. Most women during this time will either be pushing with each contraction or they might choose to breathe as they go th as each contraction comes. When pushing or breathing your baby out, sometimes the perineum, which is this very thick muscle here, doesn't give very much and so it can stay quite hard. A way to help with that is to actually, for the midwife to actually place warm compresses on the perineum which might make it softer and relax and have a little bit more give, enabling the baby's head to come down. Once the baby's head is actually birthed, the, woman will, the baby will be placed directly on the woman's chest. After that, the placenta needs to be birthed. At the women's, we have a couple of options available for women. Depending on the type of labour you've had, you might find that once the baby's born, the placenta will detach and birth by itself. For women who've had intervention, perhaps an induction, an augmentation or an epidural, those women will actually need to have an injection into their leg that makes the placenta detach and then be passed vaginally. That'll be assisted by the midwife or the doctor who's with you. Once a placenta's birth, someone would like to look at it or even take it home. If you'd like to do that, you'd need to let us know so that we can actually um, save that placenta for you and you can take it home. At the women's, we also practice delayed cord clamping. So once a baby's birthed and placed directly on mum's tummy, we'll actually wait until the cord stops pulsing before we put a clamp on it. When a second clamp is placed on, the partners are often encouraged or offered the opportunity to actually cut the cord. In the meantime, the baby will stay on mum's chest and go through that process that we spoke about earlier, where the baby will start looking for the breast and having their own breastfeed.